Hello and good morning and welcome back to New Day here on TV3. It's time for a very special interview. With me in the studio this morning, we have a two-time CNN Multi-Choice African Journalist of the Year Award winner. Uh, his name is Mr. Kofi Akpagbe. Good morning. Good morning. How Benny. are you this morning? I'm fine and Mary. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Now, uh, Kofi is actually a teacher, author, and a literary journalist. So today we're going to ask you some probing questions uh, about journalism and also about what you've been up to and some of your works so far. Now, um, first off, I mean, we I, I want to focus on a little bit on the journalism side. Now. Um, today as it is uh, when it comes to journalistic ethics morals uh, some would say they have somewhat dwindled uh, in Ghana what's your opinion on this uh, my opinion is that it's still an evolving um, area for us okay. um, you can count the numerous TV stations the numerous radio stations newspapers that are all trying to find their space and with that comes um, infringement on some of the codes and sometimes on some of the laws. Mm -hmm. uh, the important thing is that freedom of the press is here, and right. people are trying to exercise their 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 their, their pick mm -hmm. in, in the in the arena. So for me, it's it's a good sign. Um, possibly in another ten years, the trend might change. Right. But for now, I believe that we should support what's ongoing and then ensure that people. Are represented. We have a diverse society. Uh, the, the level of vulnerability it's unthinkable, especially when you go beyond places such as Accra and the big cities. Yeah. So, with the pluralism of the media, uh, Ghanaian citizens get some representation. Okay. Well, well said, actually. Okay. So, I mean, uh, okay. Now, in this particular instance, then, who do we put the onus on? Is it the institutions that are training? the up-and-coming journalists, or is it the individuals and the journalists themselves? Because I, I know for a fact, I mean, if you go to some institutions, they do not teach you to, you know, infringe people's rights. They do not teach you to abuse people's rights. So uh, w is it the training institutions or the actual individuals themselves? The, the training institutions have the, what you call the core structure with the course content. Mm -hmm. uh, so it will be difficult to say that there is someone who's gone through a journalism training school in Ghana who doesn't know about ethics right. or media laws and all those things. All those things are taught. Uh, I think it's just because the whole area is still nascent. Don't forget, this is only, we are in our 20th plus a few more years in our, in our democracy. Uh, so people are now really looking at the nuances mm -hmm. of, of the gives and take of press freedom. Um, the institutions, yes, they can also do more. They can sit up and then um, show a little more whip. Right. Uh, but largely, I, I think it also boils down on what feedback uh, the society gives. Mm -hmm. Because if uh, pu the public decides that because of these uh, infringement, we are going to boycott station a or newspaper why mm -hmm. that works yeah it does indeed okay now let's focus a little bit on you at the moment Kofi because uh, you're one of the people that's toured our nation from region to region uh, to the extent that um, these are some of his works actually there's one here romancing Ghana land the beauty of ten regions and uh, you know this just depicts I mean you've gone through all the, the regions uh, what exactly is it about tourism and culture that excites you for you to be able to you know write about it now, the very idea that we live in a country that is diverse, um, every region in Ghana, and even within a region, um, a few kilometers, you find diversity in language, in, in culture, in the way they uh, do their things. Uh, that, for me, is exciting. Uh, because there are areas in this world where you go for thousands and thousands of miles, and it's the same. Mm -hmm. I'm even talking uh, uh, landscape. Yeah. But in Ghana, there is here there's the mountain there is the coastline there is the forest there's the savannah so i believe that god has blessed us with a beautiful country and it pains me when i hear Ghanaians say that oh i know that place there's nothing there mm -hmm. i mean I i'm just tra yeah. trans no. translating that there's nothing there of course there is something because the places we have 
have stories, they have beauty in terms of landscape, and there, there's a reason for every cultural uh, uh, manifestation that is seen across Ghana. Mm -hmm. Every time of the month, everywhere in Ghana, there's a festival. Very so true. for me, these are things that I am passionate about, and I try to put them together and then share. Okay. Now, um, I'm, I'm sure that within this book, you know, The Beauty of Ten Regions, you've tried to encompass all of the beauty of these regions. Yeah. Is there any particular places that you can actually mention off the top of your head that you feel that have been ignored or been um, overlooked within Ghana that we maybe we should be focusing on? I wouldn't pick one place and say that place has been ignored because even for those places that we tout as uh, very well-known tourist destinations like the Kakums and the Cape Coast, there's still work to be done. A lot of work. You understand? <laughs> because you can go to uh, any of our top, so-called top attractions, and then a visit to the washroom will turn you off. Yeah. But these add to the total experience of the visitor. Indeed. Because if you have a great time at Moli, but customer care or uh, the tour guide was rude to you, it's a bad it doesn't experience. make you go back there. Yeah. And, and worst of all, it doesn't make the foreign tourist who brings us ready cash mm -hmm. dollar, it doesn't make that tourist go back there. So we have to look at things in totality. How do we develop these various products mm -hmm. and make them attractive? Okay. Um, we're we're going to talk about your book signing and uh, the stuff that you're doing tomorrow very shortly. One more question, though. Um, do you feel that we're doing enough in regards to tourism? Do you feel that we as a Ghanaian people, the country, are doing enough to actually try and entice people to actually come and see uh, the beauty of 10 regions? Well, I'm not surprised that we are not doing well in tourism because in other aspects of Ghanaian life economically, we are also not doing well. Right. So it comes with the, the, the territory. What surprises me is our inability to see that tourism holds for us a very, very... Um, very, very effective way of getting good foreign exchange. Um, we have an industry that allows people to fly in with foreign cash. And what they have, really, is money and time. They just want the experiences to spend these on. Yeah. And here we are, we can't please them, we can't hold, hold them. Um, in, in, in tourism, what you do is you strategize to make sure that when the visitor comes, the visitor can stay as long as possible. Now, if there isn't much to see, how long can the visitor stay? And remember, the longer the visitor stays, the more the dollars more he spends. From them. Yeah, very true. Okay, now uh, let's talk a little bit about reading. Um, now, you know, there was a famous saying that if you want to hide anything from a black person, put it in a book. Um, obviously, you don't feel the same way no, I don't. about that. Um, I don't really either. But what, what is it that you're doing right now that's going to help assist or promote healthy reading? Yeah, uh, right now, what I do, and I do it with a group of upcoming writers in Ghana. One of them is actually in the studio with me here, Nana Rea Damwa. Uh, what we do is to make sure that we produce, we, we keep writing. Um, that gives hope to those Ghanaians who have the passion and the ability to write. We also want to make reading seen as not just <coughs> an, a, an activity that gives knowledge, but an activity that can be pleasurable. Right. Okay. Not just academic. You're yeah, not just academic. Right. Because it's about telling our stories. And there's so much about us that we are, we are not telling. Mm -hmm. So we, for me personally, I want to be able to say that in five years, if you see a Ghanaian GSS uh, student and you ask him who are the celebrities in Ghana, and he names the footballers, he names the actors, he names the musician, he should name a writer. A writer. Very well done, said. I like so that. tomorrow is one of the things we are doing to ensure that uh, writing, Ghanaian writing, Ghanaian authorship is respected. It's seen as something that is viable, something that has a place. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing this at Alisa Hotel, opposite Alisa Hotel. Uh, there's a place called Totally Youth. It, there's a small lane in between Alisa, the two Alisas. You know, yes. there's a road in between yes, them, yes. Pegasus. Yes. Yeah, it leads there. And um, it's actually a book, a public reading and a book signing event okay. where Nana Damois and I will be uh, from 10 a.m. to about 4. What we are doing is that we are allowing people to come stream through. It's, it's a relaxed event. Um, if there are questions that you have for us, maybe you have your own aspiration, how to go about writing, we'll be happy to 
answer you and then hourly we'll be doing our own readings okay. from our books between us we have eight books um, and then uh, interestingly if there's an, a, a, a member of the audience who also wants to read any aspect of our books any part that excites them they are, open, so. they are welcome to stand on the stage and then read to the audience Good plus stuff. there'll be books for sale as well all right, wonderful. Yeah. I want to thank you so much for coming in this morning and sharing with us and uh, also promoting you know, healthy reading and writing. And if you're out there and you have a passion for reading and writing, make sure that you join Kofi and his colleagues tomorrow uh, opposite Alisa Hotel. Yes, at 10 What's the place called? Uh, totally Youth. Totally There'll youth. be signs there All right, so from 10 a.m. to Follow 4. the signs and you can actually go and join them there tomorrow. And you can take a look at his books, Romancing Ghana Land. Very nice. Continue, we'll talk about heartbreak today, romancing. I don't know. And also, we're experiencing it right now, Hamatan. Check it out when you get the chance. All right? So, once again, this has been Mr. Kofi Akbar. We thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Benny. All right. Thank you, we'll Benny. be back in just a few moments.